Welcome to Illinois Corn TV, where this week we will catch up on the latest with Mexico, some priorities from the ICGA, and the recent good news on Japan. Plus, somebody is itching to get in the field. We will tell you who soon. Feel free to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more agriculture information. Well, after the U.S. Trade Representative's announcement recently that the U.S. is requesting technical consultations with the government of Mexico under the Sanitary and Phytosanitary Measures chapter of the United States-Mexico-Canada Agreement regarding certain Mexican measures concerning products of agriculture biotechnology, Illinois Corn Growers Association President Matt Rush shared the following statement. He said trade is the largest market for Illinois corn and Mexico is our largest international customer for corn. Illinois corn farmers are happy to see the USTR take steps to hold Mexico to the terms they agreed to when negotiating the U.S.-Mexico-Canada Agreement for Trade. Resolution of this trade dispute will bring certainty to the marketplace that Illinois corn farmers need. Now, let's hear from ICGA President Matt Rush about priorities for this year. Our Priorities this year is the first thing is, is the Next Generation Fuels Act. We lost a major champion in Representative Bustos whenever she chose not to run for uh, re-election and she was the um, one of the sponsors of the Next Generation Fuels Act. So we're going to work diligently to find new sponsors and new co-sponsors to carry that across the finish line and hope to see that come into rule. The next thing is, is we're going to focus on the Farm Bill. We all know the Farm Bill is up and uh, for discussion this year and there's lots of things that we need to make sure stick in the farm bill, such as crop insurance, and we wanna make sure that that safety net is there for not only young producers, but every one of our members who um, take advantage of the crop insurance. And the last thing is locks and dams. We were uh, been working on this for 20 years, uh, even before I came on the board, and uh, it was a, a nice win to see that that was funded, and we want just to go ahead and see that happen, and I told one reporter earlier that it's, you know, until you actually see that lock breaking, that that barge break in half going through the lock and dam, you know, 600 feet at a time, it really brings it in perspective how over, uh, how old those locks are need to be updated. And last week, Illinois corn leaders joined Senator Tammy Duckworth and Ambassador Rahm Emanuel in coordination with the U.S. Grains Council to celebrate a critical win in ongoing efforts to achieve 100% access to the Japanese fuel ethanol market for U.S. ethanol. Throughout 2022, Illinois Corn supported efforts in coordination with the U.S. Grains Council to address incorrect carbon scores. Illinois Corn sent technical experts, Dr. Stephen Muller, researcher at the University of Illinois at Chicago, and Dr. Michael Wang, a researcher at the Department of Energy's Argonne National Laboratory to Tokyo to meet with and educate Japanese regulators and followed up with another mission that helped address concerns about farming practices and ethanol availability. This latest mission to Tokyo helped highlight years of effort by the U.S. Grains Council and Illinois Corn to accurately portray the carbon intensity score of ethanol in the U.S. The increase in market access expansion is set to begin in April of 2023. Well, we had a chance to also catch up with a farmer in central Illinois as he was getting his equipment ready for the upcoming planting season. While we were there, this Illinois corn growers member, he had a little feller on the farm. He let us know how excited he is to get out in the field. Who doesn't like a good farmer's dog picture this time of year? We do hope you have a great week and we will see you on the next episode.